Finally, something that isn't horny idiocy on X. OP, you eyed. Either way, I do have a personal experience to add to this. Be me, Australian. Unfortunate, I know. About 26 at this point. Come into possession of a large rural property west of Tiree in Hunter Valley and a very large chunk of cash after my grandfather's passing. Decide fuck it after a while and decide to settle there to become relatively self-sufficient. Spoiler, and just to be left alone, to be honest. Buy some chickens, some goats, and just for fun, just because I was able to, a mule. I love this creature beyond all belief. Was already saddle trained by the time I got him. Name him Jack. Fast forward a few months. Be part of an equestrian hiking club up in the Blue Mountains. Kind of an oddball though, since most of the other members of the group I usually ride with are young girls and their ponies, normally alongside one or both of their parents. All except our supervisor slash guide, Noah, an aboriginal guy with a rough cut water horse named Steel. Most hikes usually end up with me sticking to the back of the pack and talking with Noah. This goes on for months. Practically a supervisor myself now, often asked to help out with issues on the road. Usually pulling young riders up on their rein or saddle or foot position or de-spooking of our horses. Come to really appreciate how calm and collected my mule is in comparison. Noah trusts me immensely, can see I've got all of my shit together. Asks me if I would want to come on a multi-day trip through the national park and up past Noon's Plateau with another group. Fuck yeah, that JPEG. Make preparations. Get there with Jack, greeted by Noah and a bunch of older, more experienced riders with actual full-sized horses for once. Goes off without a hitch for the first day. Cut to that night. Everyone has hitched their animals and have set up camp for the night. 2am. Being a light sleeper, I am immediately aware that something has severely spooked one of the horses. Stamping, whining, making a real scene. All the other horses were awake, wickering nervously at each other. Get out there, since I realize nobody else will. Get a little bit spooked myself, as the horse doesn't calm down right away, even with my methods. Starts kicking behind itself. I grab a flashlight. Check behind it. Hear a sort of tromping scuttle from whatever it was, and see leaves being kicked up from the corners of my flashlight. Assumed it was just a wombat or a swamp wallaby or something. Definitely sounded like one. And they're both common around here anyway. Hagrid should not have done that. PNG. Cut to the next day. Wake up tired, as per usual. Noah tells everyone that this is going to be the longest part of the trip, and will likely take until late evening to get to the next campsite. Perfect, dot JPEG. Saddle up Jack, we get on with it. Walking all day. Couple of pit stops for water and shit. Sun starts setting as we get relatively close to the next site. Jack starts acting up in the middle of the trail. Only just noticed that he'd picked up a load of ticks on one of his feet slash legs on the same foot that he busted a shoe on a few days before the trip and was still getting used to the new one. Tell Noah I gotta deal with this. Wants everyone to stop. Urge him onwards. Tell him I won't be long and that the trail's obvious from here. He trusts me enough to know what I'm doing but pleads with me not to get lost along the way. Says that he'd leave a fire or something so I could find them. Get to picking. Somehow, didn't notice that Jack apparently had a small nick across from his hoof, which is what attracted all the ticks. Shit. Pick out all the ticks from his leg. Clean his wound with antibacterial wipes. Check his shoe. All of this takes about 20 minutes. 20 minutes that we didn't have. Shit. The sun was just barely there. Could only just see the trail. Looking for the light of a fire or something up ahead. Nothing. Inevitably, we took a wrong turn. Shit. 
wander up the side of a fucking mountain for about 15 minutes, not knowing where we were going. Jack suddenly, in the middle of what was supposedly the trail, gives a quick snort and abruptly stops. Ears pricked directly forwards. Give him a tap. Try to get him to move forward a bit. Nothing. Gently tug on his reins to get him to focus. Nothing. He is completely seized up. I know this animal very intimately and know that he only does this if something has really spooked him. Start to feel really uneasy myself. Pull on his reins a little harder. Jack turns his head very slightly towards me. Only just enough that I can see the whites of his eyes are fully exposed. I'm scared now. Small rustling is heard in front of us. Jack snaps his head forward again, splays his front feet slightly. Keep talking to him softly and patting his haunches, trying to calm him down. In reality, I think I was trying to reassure myself more than the mule. Suddenly become blisteringly aware of the silence. Complete and utter silence. No owls or possums calling out, no frogs, no crickets, nothing but my own slightly labored breathing. Here small rock get dislodged behind us. Jack flinches, starts slowly stepping back. Instantly, I hear that tromping scuttle I heard before, coming at us from behind and in front. Jack flips his shit. Makes a sound I have never heard come out of an animal before or since. Jumps a full foot in the air with a sprawling rear leg kick, almost completely throwing me from his saddle. Bolts down the mountain at breakneck speed. Meanwhile, during that jump, one of my boots got caught in the left stirrup iron. Now being dragged over jagged rocks down a mountain at immense speeds by my left leg that's still attached to the saddle of a terrified mule. whoop de doo Despite protecting my head with my arm, I'm still acutely aware that the scuttling sound is still directly next to us. Can barely see shit. It's almost completely dark. I can only just make out the leaves and rocks and shit that are being kicked up about a meter next to us, somehow managing to keep pace. Desperately try to make purchase on anything I can to try and pull myself up back onto the saddle. Manage to somehow grab onto what I can only assume was the saddle flap and hoist myself up a little way. Bad idea. Arm protecting my head makes violent contact with a massive rock pointing out of the ground. My wrist gets fucking dislocated. Not a moment after, the scuttling to my side gets much louder, and I feel what I could only picture to be a fucking talon strike the side of my head, making a deep cut just above my temple. One might assume it was another rock, but rocks don't fucking cling to the place that they cut you. Jack cries out and almost tramples me, trying not to trip over himself. Resisting the urge to shit myself, I somehow manage to flail my body upwards enough to give me enough clarity to grab onto the saddle's pommel without my leg slipping through the stirrup and hoist myself up, back up with one hand. Basically clinging to Jack for dear life now, my face keeps getting whapped by tree branches as we finally manage to reach the bottom of the mountain. Directly into camp. Didn't even notice the light of the bonfire we were rushing towards. Had my head down, focusing on the trees and the ever-impending and ever-closing-in, scuttling next to us on both sides. Jack also apparently did not expect this, as when he suddenly hit flat ground, after the downwards incline, he completely toppled over, now fully throwing me from his saddle and onto the hard, stony dirt below. He was fine. I was not. He got up almost immediately, kicking and braying and spooking all the other horses, and sending everyone in the camp into a panic. I just arrived there for a moment, winded and in a lot of pain, just trying to get up and fucking run. Noah rushes to me, hands all over me, trying to set me right. In his defense, I did have blood streaming from the side of my head, was covered in deep scratches, and had a limp wrist. Managed to wheeze out, uh, hand me a flashlight. 
flashlight? You need a do- Hand me a flashlight. Could still hear them. The scuttling. The rustling. It was still there. Pacing around the camp. The spooked brays and squeals of the horses and the concerned babbling of the people in the camp almost seemed muffled in comparison to the sound of what I knew was there. Pacing around the edges of the fire's light. Get handed my flashlight. Could hear one of them. Not but ten meters away. Shine my light directly at where I knew it was. Nothing. A flurry of leaves and small twigs were kicked up as it skittered up the small gully. It was on like a frightened lizard. But there was no... thing. No form there to be seen. Turn off flashlight. Turn to Noah. We can't stay here tonight. What do you mean? What, what did you do? I stand up. Look him dead in the face. We can't stay here tonight. I don't actually remember much after that. I know that Noah patched me up and acted very creeped out. We were forced to stay there for the night, but I refused to let anyone douse the fire, and everyone and their horses were up all night. Everyone blamed me for being tired the next morning and having to cut the trip short so I could get proper medical attention. I didn't care. All I remember doing is sitting on a log, listening to those things circle our camp until sunrise, then spending about four days in hospital while my brother took care of Jack. Obviously, I have not been back there since. Just for some context, but my dad served 20 plus years in the army and did tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. Even before then, he was a very physically fit guy from being into martial arts. He got out of the military around 2010. He has also lived in Florida a majority of his life. Before I begin, I want to apologize for the probably shitty punctuation. Also, it is a copy-paste because the story was too long for one post. So this happened during the summer months in 2015, around the Everglades. My dad had decided that he wanted to do some boar hunting, so he borrowed my uncle's shotgun and some hunting clothes. He had decided to bring some other hunting equipment. Machete, matches, flashlight, some food, water, etc. It was a pretty nice day that he decided to head out. Slight morning breeze with clear skies. A perfect day to hunt boar, is what he said. He gets out to a parking spot and starts to make his way into the hammocks. By his estimation, he made it about a mile or so in before he picked up a trail of a boar. The tracks were semi-fresh, so he decided to follow it. He followed it for about two miles before it led off into a more hazardous terrain. He weighed his option of either giving up or marching through it, and my dad, being the tough guy that he is, decided to nut up and shut up. He decided to go ahead and load the gun first, just in case. From his estimation, it was about two, maybe three, when he started walking, so when he split into the thicker parts, it would have been around five-ish. He thought that he had lost the trail a couple of times, but kept finding it. So about a mile in, is when he said stuff started to get weird. What he said was that he had heard something like a faint clacking sound, almost like someone was smacking a stick against something. At the time, he thought nothing of it, because he barely even heard it. But what he hadn't noticed at the time is that it had gotten quieter. The bugs were still swarming, and he could hear some of her sounds, but not nearly as much as a minute ago. Another two miles in, he started to think about calling it quits for the day, because he was six miles in, and was still following what he presumed to be the same trail. It was also starting to get darker. Maybe seven or eight is what he said. He decided to keep going for a little longer, just so that way he could say he tried. Fortunately, it did not take long before he found what he had been looking for. The boar. He got low and slowly moved a little closer before shouldering the gun. He took a shot and dropped the thing in one take. He made his way over to it and started to prep it. 
It was at this point that he noticed that there was absolutely no noise around him. He stood up from where he was and looked around him, shotgun at the ready, scanning everything around him before kneeling back down to quickly finish his work. He almost finished when every nerve in his body lit up like a Christmas tree. Now, my dad is not an easily scared guy, but he had learned to trust his instincts and everything was telling him that he is being watched right now. That's when he heard what he described as a cartoon kissing sound. He froze in his tracks, but slowly got up from the spot, shotgun once again at the ready. He heard the sound again, but this time, it was a lot louder, maybe 10 to 15 feet away. He noticed that the area had begun to stink as well. Not your normal Florida stank, but more like B.O. or bad breath. At this point, he had to take out the flashlight and began to move it in the direction he thought he heard it from. Heart pounding in his ears before another kiss drew the light further to the left. His light found what was making the noise. It was crouched down in an almost sitting position, more than anything, and it looked like a cross between an orangutan and a regular ape. It was covered in either a brown or dark orange fur, and its eyes reflected the light. My dad started to back away from it, in the direction he had came, his entire body screaming at him to run as he shakily kept the light and gun trained on it. He knew what he was looking at. A skunk ape. The ape slowly got up from his spot and stood on its hind legs. That's when my dad could see how big the fucker was. Even though it was covered in fur or hair, he could tell that it was built like semi, at least seven to eight feet tall too. As my dad was backing away, it made this vocalization that he interpreted as a growl or a warning sign before it started to walk, making the noise as it did so. My dad in a panic fired the shot at it and booked it. He ran as hard as fast as he could while he heard the ape make that long call noise. Clearly my dad had pissed the thing off because he could hear it begin to scream. Oddly though, you'd expect it to be loud, but he said it sounded like a mixture of a bear and a monkey, just quieter. According to my dad, he did not stop running until he could not hear it anymore. He took a short break to catch his breath before breaking back into a sprint. He ran the whole six miles in a little under an hour. The whole time he felt like he was being watched, which is what kept the adrenaline pumping. He jumped into his truck and sped off away from the area. He didn't stop until he got home, at which point he basically passed out. The next day, he called my uncle to tell him about what happened. My uncle told him that he had been hunting in that area a couple of times before and gone deeper, and he never saw or heard anything like what my dad heard. My dad went to my uncle's place the next day and dropped off his stuff. My uncle questioned my dad and was slightly convinced that he had definitely seen something. So, I am going to tell you guys how I quit being a meth head, because it was quite paranormal. I have been looking here for the last two to three years, and never actually written anything. Partly because I wasn't even able to form proper sentences until the beginning of 2020. Just a heads up, it isn't anything on the levels of X Factor or anything, but it was just weird as fuck for me. Around 2010, started using weed and it became quite a habit. I had a little group that I smoked together with. One day, some random dude just slides in and becomes part of our little group and nobody really bats an eye because he was very natural at it. One to two years pass, I start college. This guy asks me if I want to crank it up. Me being an idiot says yes and we do fucking math. Yes, it goes from 0 to 100 that fast. At first he buys it and brings it, and I just do a very little bit. We use the pipe for it, and I am mostly there 
for keeping an eye out for him. This continues, and his stashes keep getting smaller and smaller. I also start noticing that I got hooked, but I keep lying to myself. So this kind of keeps going for a while, and I don't become a junkie junkie until I lose my parents in a car crash in mid-2015. They leave me a big chunk of money with a house. That's why I'm going to skip past the details and start telling the actual paranormal story. I'm at the house, computer engineer, doing websites to keep my mind occupied and gain some cash. But lately, I can't really do it since my mind is fucked from the weird ass thing I smoked. It sure as hell wasn't meth at that point. I was sure about that, but I just kept smoking it since I didn't know better. My dealer was a new guy, nothing weird about him. He was just a normal dude selling drugs. The guys I smoked meth with disappeared after my parents were gone. Me being friendless and a junkie kept using it. One day, my dealer tells me to use it in the abandoned hospital near town so that I don't OD. Me being a brain dead idiot, accept it and start using it there. I just take a sleeping bag and get my syringe and stuff from the dealer. I admit that it was shady as fuck for him to give it to me with a syringe and stuff, but I was brain dead at that point. So I go there and start using it. A month passes. At that point, everything in my life is more or less a blur. Like how you move around drunk, half conscious, and not just remembering some stuff, but almost entirely forget everything else. So there are people there using it as well. And sometimes some people come and take them away. One day I just find myself walking, fully aware of everything, just like normal. I'm happy for some reason. Two guys just keep following me. They signal me, but I can't understand it. I just tried to go somewhere, but I don't know where. I have something in my hand, but I don't know what it is. Suddenly, I start hearing those two guys' voice. They're yelling at me. They keep saying what the fuck and what do we do. Then I wake up in a mental hospital. 2017. Doctors tell me that I am better now and can go back to my house. I have to pay them something like 30 grand, so the money my parents left me is basically gone completely now. I just have something like 5k. Still need to check in regularly. I go to the house. Everything feels absolutely weird. My computer's SSD is gone. All security cameras are gone. Fridge is empty. Kitchen is completely empty. No pictures or anything. At first, I think to myself that someone must have broken in and lived here for a while, but it doesn't make any sense. I talk about this to my psychiatrist, and he tells me some weird story about how Dutch people are very diligent. I sell the house and move out from the town. I now work at the library in night shifts. Nothing weird is going on in my life, but it still feels weird. Weirdest part about this whole thing is that I don't feel anything towards my parents or anything. As if I just didn't really live there in those years. This isn't really paranormal, but still, I just wanted to type it there, since everything is anonymous and stuff. Ask friend if he knows anyone who had access to some tools I needed to finish a project. Say sure, he knows a guy from work that would be happy to help. Apparently, he was interested in the same kind of art, but warns me he's a bit off. Drive friend to work one day. He introduces me. Guy seems really distant and withdrawn. Shakes my hand and we chat a bit. He seems really interested in the woodwork that I was doing, and we talked about sculptures and such for a little while. Things we'd learned, tools we used, etc. Guy warms up a bit, and I ask him if it would be alright if I checked out some of his stuff. He hesitantly agrees, kind of like when you're trying to come up with an excuse, but just can't. He tells me to swing by that night. We can chat over a few beers. Okay, sure. Later that night I get a call. It's the guy. He sounds a little shaken up. 
says things are chaotic and right now isn't a good time. Says he'll call me sometime. Whatever, sure man. Two weeks go by. Guy calls one afternoon. Says things have settled down. And he wants me to bring over some of my works as well. To compare and blah blah blah. Sure dude. So I start to head over. And notice this guy lives in the middle of fucking nowhere. I had to call him up just to find his house. It's at the end of a long driveway. Beautiful acres of land. The driveway is littered with trees. And his house is actually pretty nice. As I come up to the driveway, something strikes me as odd about the trees I'm passing by. They all have faces carved into them, facing the driveway. Twisted, pain faces. I didn't think much of it. I make morbid stuff myself. And in fact, I was very impressed. The amount of detail was staggering. Looking out onto the tree line of the property, every tree had a pained face looking in on the house. Almost like the woods were watching you wherever you were. This actually kind of creeped me out. Looking out was like seeing a hundred or so white faces just crying out. Kind of like they wanted your attention. Knock on the door. Guy answers with a beer in hand, and a much friendlier demeanor than before. Helps me carry some of my stuff in, and he shows me around. Guy seems pretty cool. Begin to notice each room has one of those same damned faces hanging above the doorframe. The more I saw them, the more I felt sick. Up close, the faces were more detailed than I had imagined, almost surrealistic. I asked him what his focus on the faces were for, and the guy kind of tensed up and dodged my question. Upon entering his workshop, which was fucking sweet by the way, he seemed to have other interests besides creepy faces. Entire seven-foot sculptures of women, men, animals, etc. All very well done, and one with a tarp in the back, just chilling there. He says it isn't done yet, so I don't bother. It was right in front of a door that I think led to another room. We began working on stuff together. Trading stories and times that we had accidentally injured ourselves. Suddenly changed subjects. Guy asked me what I think about God. Tell him I'm not very religious, but I don't rule anything out. Guy starts getting a bit loud, saying that God is a blatant lie. He was told so. By who? He kind of silenced for a moment, and then abruptly asked me if I believed in spirits. Gave him the same kind of answer. It's possible. He starts looking around the room, as if seeing if anyone is around. And then his voice goes soft, and he kind of whispers for a moment. I see things in the woods. At dusk, I can see their shadows. Sometimes they whisper in the trees, and I can hear them. Fucking nope. Obviously, this guy is mentally disturbed. Egg him on. Ask him what they tell him, etc. They tell him that God is a lie, and the only thing after death is darkness. He says they laugh at him and leave dead animals at his tree line. Officially creeped out at this point. He said that for a while, they visited him at night, and each face carving represented a different spirit that had visited him. Says that they can't stand looking at themselves in death, so they don't step within the tree line. That's why he has the entire thing carved out. I'm pretty silent at this point. I hadn't had goosebumps so bad since I was a kid, and chills just running up my spine. He told me they talked to him from the tree line at night, and try to get him to leave his home. I eagerly tried to change the subject. Guy looks down and just keeps talking. He's as pale as a sheet, and was obviously genuinely terrified. He even kind of looks like he's welling up. Tells me I'm the only person he's ever told. Knowing I'm a stranger, he apologizes, says he's scared, 
and doesn't know what to do anymore. I try my best to awkwardly console the stranger, and the guy actually kind of starts to break down. I think he needs help, but it's not my place to give it to him. Regrettingly ask him why he's afraid. Says the faces don't work anymore. And two weeks ago, he had something terrible happen in his living room. Huh? He walks over to the tarped sculpture and pulls the tarp off to reveal the most mangled, terrible thing I've ever seen. It hardly resembled a human being. It was terrifying to have imagined this guy seeing it standing in his living room. Shortly after, a loud bang on the wall to my right. I nearly jumped out of my skin. This guy didn't even flinch. Then again, bang. Then it just continued on and on continuously, like hail hitting a tin roof. The guy screams stop it, and it ceases. After that I grabbed my shit. I told the guy I'm sorry and got out of there as quickly as possible. As I'm leaving his home and driveway, I look into the rear view mirror. The tree line is darker than I've ever seen. Guy calls a week later and apologizes, says that he was silly and everything is okay now. Friend says the guy quit, and I never hear from him again.